physically possible. That's the number one kind of lesson that I've gotten from doing research is just the world is way more crazy than I ever had anticipated. And I don't think I'll ever be done being curious about it. Researcher Vikram Balaga of the University of British Columbia studies the anatomy and movement of animals. He's especially fascinated with flight, how a bird flies, and how their bodies allow them to do things man-made flying machines can't. There's reports of, of certain species that can basically stay aloft for like months at a time, and they just kind of like dip down occasionally to get food. They can kind of like sleep with half a brain on and relying on like winds and currents to kind of keep them going. There's a few hundred species of hummingbirds, and their wings can go crazy fast. 40 times a second to like 100 or 120 times a second. Flight is when an animal is flying, you know, like a, a bird or a bat or, or an insect. They are very much responsible for generating the forces to keep themselves up, you know, in the sky. They have to do it entirely with their wings. We're still trying to understand exactly all the different things that, that it takes to be a flyer and, and be able to power your own kind of flight. To really understand how bird wings twist and flex, Vikram needs to manipulate them with his own hands. Living birds wouldn't work, so he turned to the dead ones kept in a museum. In the first few weeks that I was here, I went over there and just played around with a few cadavers. Like, there was a few, like, duck wings. I'd never really played with a duck wing before. It's like a very foreign object to me. Birds essentially have wrists and they have elbows, and it was principally those two joints that we focused on. Uh, just because we wanted to see within the wing, you know, what the wing is capable of doing, what the range of shapes the wing can take uh, is, and how that might correspond to a certain style of flight or not. This is the wrist, and so the bird is kind of like sitting like that, um, with its hand coming down this way, forearm over here, and then the elbow is kind of tucked away in the back. Birds that soar a lot, like turkey vultures or eagles or, or albatrosses, they have a lot of limitations in terms of what their what their joints can do. There's a lot of like locking up of the wing in certain positions, and that helps them stabilize as they're gliding around in, in these like you know high force environments. But this research can teach us more than just about how and why different birds fly. It offers insight for how humans might better create our own flight designs. To what I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS. Shalom to the whole for elect, preaching this word in truth and sincerity. To you, ribs, to your sisters out there, learning the silence and staying in order. Right? To you, uh, 12 tribes uh, scattered abroad, the so called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Um, you are the true Israelites, man, uh, on this side of the earth, man. We know that we are scattered and we're in different countries, man. Um, but yeah, man, that video was about uh, how um, uh, men study the creation of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai in order to create, um, you know, planes um, and other things, man. The study of animals has been going on for a long time, man. Um, and we're gonna get a little we're gonna go into it. Um I'm gonna start off with this precept though. This is uh Jeremiah chapter eight, verse seven. Even the stork that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration, right? Because it was programmed inside of them to do these things. Right? They they live a uh um they basically live a perfect life, man. And that's how uh, Israel will be in the kingdom, uh, you know, when when they receive the new uh, bodies in the twinkle of the eye, the lost types of commandments will be programmed into you and you'll have a new body where you'll be perfect, right? These animals right now are an example to us as to how uh, in order uh, we should be, right? And Esau studied these animals for his purpose, which is, you know, Esau loves the sword, so he likes to use these uh, animals and make better ways to create war, right? That's what he does. But on our side, we study them, you know, you know, to uh, basically, uh, you know, give praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and how, um, you know, he deserves the praise for creating the life and the intelligence that goes into these things, 
um, you know, and it teaches us how to, um, you know, sort of like just maneuver. You know, there's a lot of uh, parallels in the scriptures where it compares us either to animals in a, in a negative way or in a positive way, but more as a teaching tool, right? So animals are used to teach the people certain lessons, right? But going into Esau, Edom, uh, he likes to use it for war purposes, like I said, right? So start at verse 7 again. Even the stork that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration, right? And migration is a time period where a bird um, moves to a different location to avoid uh, snow, right? A storm, right? Just like uh, Israel shall be, should be, you know, uh, migrating towards Yahweh Hashem Yahushai in these strange times, um, in order to escape storms, right? What's coming, Jacob's trouble, right? In that sense, it says as as do the turtle doves, the the swallow and the crane, they all return at the proper time each year, right? They're on point, they're on time, they're meticulous, right? Says, but not my people, they do not know Yahweh Hashem Yahushai's laws, right? This is why we need to return to Him perfectly, as these birds migrate perfectly, right? So I had uh, I found this little um. Let me show you real quick. It's called Bio Inspired Pyre, Bio mimicry right biomimicry is the science and art of emulating nature's best biological ideas to solve human problems right and i and technically they basically got this from the scriptures you know what i mean because yahweh bashim yahushai gave it to the prophets of old and you know put it to the scriptures and you know esau likes to dabble and try to you know trying to figure this thing out for himself says some examples of biomimicry, right? One common example of biomimicry is Velcro. Velcro was designed by an engineer who took a close look at the burdock burrs that clung to his clothes after a walk in the woods and noticed that the tiny hooks on the burrs that attach to the fibers of his clothing right you know those little balls when you uh they're like uh they look like dandelions but they're like basically in this this little picture right here right these little things you know you used to run around in the fields or wherever you may be and they get stuck to your clothing some of them are green some of them are brown and then we used to take them off you know and then we throw them at each other playing around and they get stuck to your shirt your shirt that's where that idea came from right Check this one out. Birds have long been the inspiration for humans when designing airplanes. Check this out, man. Look at that. Look at the aerodynamics on that. All right, you can see the wing. Kind of tipped it up. It's it's perfect. All right? It says birds have long been the inspiration for humans when designing airplanes. Here, the, f the fast flying falcon may have influenced the design of the swift B 2 bomber, right? I believe they also call it a stealth bomber. I'm not sure. But that, 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 that plane right there, it, it's a deadly weapon, man. When that thing comes out, it, it only comes out to destroy things. As it goes in and out, you can't even, you can't even catch them. But it says, their sleek profile and aerodynamic lines make them both efficient flyers. Right? That's pretty dope. So you see how they that like they got if you like when they they they, they test like uh, fast cars, right? They put them in a wind tunnel and they study the wind going across the 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 car to see 
how can they shape the car to be more aerodynamic? That's why uh, there was a period of time where cars were made to look almost like a soap bar, you know, uh, the, the, the bubble, um, because of the aerodynamics. Uh, before, back in the 80s and before that, they were more square and boxy, right? Um, we got a scripture. This is Job. 35, verse 11. Where is the one who makes us smarter than the animals and wiser than the birds of the sky? Right, this is a rhetorical question. Right, but letting us know that men was created to be smarter than these beasts. Why? You know, the Lord put these beasts here to serve us in a way that they serve us is by teaching us things, you know, like flight patterns. You know, um, we wouldn't, we really, we really wouldn't be where we are today if these birds weren't here. It's like, yeah. um, you know, the Lord did this, um, you know, he created this movie for a reason. He put these birds in the air and different type of species to do different things, to teach us things, right? So lucky for that. Somebody keeps calling me. I don't know who that is. Um, I'm gonna keep going. The structure of lotus leaves or lily pads help them keep their surfaces clean and dry. There are microscopic folds and wax crystals on the surface of the leaves that help them repel water and dirt particles. Lessons from this plant can help researchers make self-cleaning paint, glass, and clothing. So lock it, man. Somebody keeps calling me, distracting me. Um, all right, let's look at the next one. It says, even though mussels live in wet environments, they are able to stick themselves to solid objects so that they are not carried away by the tide or waves. The sticky fibers that they use are the inspiration for scientists to develop the glue that can be effective in wet conditions. All right, so that's how they created glue that, um, basically waterproof glue, right? I mean, I'm not going to keep going with this, but you get the point, right? These, uh, these things were inspired to help a man, um, either make life easier or make life harder on other men, <laughs> you know, depending on who uses it. You know, Esau is a wicked man. He'll, he'll, he'll do anything for his own advantage. Right, you know, but the at times, you know, the the scriptures tell us to look at these animals to teach us how to move. Right, this is um, I go to Proverbs, Proverbs six. Take a take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Now, this is a New Living Translation, obviously, right. I think in the new uh, the King James says uh, sluggard, um, which same thing, right? Take a take a lesson from the ants, you you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wiser, right? Because the ant the ant continuously works, man, and they don't have any um, you know they don't have anybody telling them what to do. They just do it, right? They're programmed to, right? Verse 7, though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? 
a little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Right? You get... You get the point on that. Um, so like, uh, give me one second. All right. I think, I think we're good. Okay, I think we're good. Slack, yeah. Yeah, man. So, for example, the Lord, the Lord uses um, the ass and the donkey to compare how foolish we are in not coming back to Him. It says the uh, the ass knows the master's um, crib. I'm butchering it. Let me get it. I think it's in Hosea. Let me double check. Like it's Isaiah 1 and 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not consider. My people does not consider. Right? Another comparison. Right? I want to go to Job 12. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee, and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not all these that the, the hand of Yahweh Shem Shai has wrought this? In whose hand is the soul of every living, living, living thing, and the breath of all mankind? Does not the ear try words, and the mouth taste his meat? With, with the ancient, with the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days understanding. With him is wisdom, and strength, and he has counsel and understanding. Right. And with that, I'm gonna say shalom.